All right, I got a MS200T with a not so custom paint job on it. That's a, uh... never mind. <laughs> this was a victim of a bunch of like, you know, an Amazon or eBay tune-up kit, which had like a, a whole bunch of stuff. There was an aftermarket intake boot on it, aftermarket carburetor, aftermarket fuel filter. It, I can't even remember what else. Uh, so we got a new fuel line in here, new intake boot, all factory stuff. Um, the carb that was in it is one of the earlier 200 carburetors, and it is giving me some finicky stuff. I worked on it, serviced it, took it out and ran it. It was a little finicky to tune. Finally got it set in, and uh, I set it down for the day, went back out later, and ran it again, and the tune was all over the place. Got it to settle back in. We're going to kind of recreate that. So I ran this yesterday, and it seemed to be okay. But I'm going to hang it out there and say that today it's not right. We're actually going to take a spare carburetor that I've got, and I like these much better. We're going to take that little foil piece right there out, and we're going to pack it with some JB Weld. And that is your accelerator circuit, your accelerator pump. And they get a little finicky. So just by doing that, we'll take the new carburetor kit out of there and put it in here and see if we can't get this thing a little bit more stable. Let's take it outside and run it and see how it does. And again, this was in perfect tune yesterday where the best I could put it in. All right, cold start. I can smell fuel. Here, let me take the choke off. out of tune once it warms up you'll notice how much smoke is coming out of this it's starting to idle up already some of you may have noticed my shirt today Yesterday, Rob Pitts, uh, Rabbit Shoes Cars, you've seen him on VinWiki here on YouTube. Uh, he passed away yesterday, uh, nasty battle with cancer. Anyway, he is one funny bitch. If you don't know who Rob Pitts is, look him up on YouTube. And if you need a laugh, it'll do. You don't necessarily have to remove the gas tank for this. It's just a little bit easier. You'll fight it. I just checked from the time I stopped the last, uh, the last segment of the video, and right now it's 10 minutes. If you work on these, they're really a breeze. Um, I have to use both hands here. I've got the intake blocked off. So I'm gonna have to hold in my little intake plug I've got right here. But I can pump this up to seven pounds as long as I hold in that plug. I do want to see if I'm leaking anywhere around the boot. I can't remember if this is a new one or a new to him one. Yeah, I got a slow leak and I'm like 90% sure that it's coming from All right, there's my seven. If I keep pressure on this, as soon as I loosen up on it, yeah, it's just my seal for my plug. Let's try some vacuum. I did rotate the crankshaft just to make sure. These are known, and you can hear this. You know, there's some side-to-side -side play. You know, and unless the bearings are brand hammer new, you're going to have that. Whoops. Now, doing this as a vacuum test, it should hold that plug in. And 
There you go. It's rock steady and not moving. Again, need both hands here, but I am going to rotate the crank, pull on it just a little bit. Yeah. The more I rattle it around, the more it starts to fall off. I'm down to six inches. If I leave it alone, it stays put. Let's see if I can't. I don't know if I can get y'all in on that. And then... slowly starts to leap down. So we have the beginning of an air leak. You know, these seals aren't forever. Let's talk about 200s. All uh, right, everybody and their brother, man, I want a 200, man, I want a 200, man, I want a 200. These have been out of production for at least 15 years. These saws are gonna have some wear and tear on them. Even the mint ones look, you know, you, know, you still got rubber parts and rubber is not forever and seals are not forever. Yeah, moreover, you know, I, I'm, if you run Mtronic saws, you kind of get spoiled on it. They're never out of tune. You know, this saw will need to be tuned twice a year. You know, if it, if you're trying to get the most performance out of it, especially if there's been some performance work done to it, you know, I mean, you can set like very easy low ball settings on it, strip away some of the uh, performance out of it and have a year round tune. But I don't think, you know, if you work for a living, you want that thing to sing, you want it to cut, you want it to have the best power it can. The Amtronics are so much better. So unless you're good at tuning. All right, so we're gonna split this. Uh, throw some new bearings and seals in it. And uh, that should cure us. And this is why you do a pressure and vacuum test. It's only the carb when there's not an air leak. So think about it. when you have an air leak, you're allowing more air into the crankcase, into the combustion cycle than the carburetor. You know, once you set the screws in the carburetor, it's there. And it's only gonna add so much fuel at whatever amount of throttle you give it. And if, especially on um, coming off the throttle, you create more vacuum in the crankcase because the butterfly is closed, so it's going to suck more air in Sometimes it's just an idle. We saw out there in the very beginning where I set it down and I was talking to you and the idle started to creep up. That's that air leak. Just seeping in just a little bit extra air, making it want to run leaner. So Not a whole lot to these. I've got all the screws out that will uh, that hold this. You, know, you don't need a case splitter. Here, let me do it this way. Just... You know, no brute force, no nothing. These just come apart. Crank goes over there. And then we can clean all this nonsense. And, you know, I do this on an old, you know, disgusting towel, just because you can only drain so much oil out of the crankcase. Well, I think it's safe to say that these bearings have given all they can so if you look it's just a little nylon cage that holds those rollers so this is a roller bearing versus a traditional ball bearing um, cool thing about these are that they are slick as a minnow they have very very little bit of drag on these and then here's the crankcase seals and these are made out of Bakelite they are plastic. If you chip that, you'll see green underneath. So when you install them, it's kind of like 99.9% .9 of seals go in like this. Because this has that layer of nylon or whatever that material, that rubbery material is, they actually go in this way. So that way, this sealing surface kind of cradles the crankshaft. <clears throat> Let me put this rascal together. All right, so here's your setup on how to press these seals in. 
just find a, a socket with the exact same diameter maybe just a whisper under because you're going to press that flat and then one that will cover the bearing and by the way if you install them it looks like that the um what we do this goes that goes towards the uh crankcase seal so then all you have to do is just put you in the stand here and then just just as you start this just make sure you're going in straight there we go and you want to be there that bottomed out now one person and some hands an extra hand would be great doing this but you can do it by yourself okay let's see how smoothly i can do this So, and let me pull my ignition high tension lead out. And this will just slide over and let me line everything up. Hopefully my big head's not in the way. And there. Whoops, come on. Wanna hear that snap? There. Now, we're just gonna make sure that all our holes line up and that we're not messing with the gasket. I'll do that on my own. But you just, it just snaps in there. I mean, there's no, no trick to it those rollers will actually kind of lean out a little bit and grab the crank and just like before you know when i said you know we had a little bit of side to side and left or, or up and wet playing the crank it's gone now that's in there tighter than dick's hat band all right here we are an hour and a half later actually about an hour and 40 minutes later from the last time i was in the backyard saws all back together uh, when I went to go reset the carburetor, the low and high screws were out about one and a half, almost. So obviously I was trying to tune around a problem. Now that we have this, you know, I, I have not pulled the cord on this. It's cold start. Um, fuel line's empty, carb. No, I didn't clean the carb, so there's actually a little bit of fuel in the carb. It might just pop right off. say the test run was condensed um i let it sit for a few minutes and i was just editing up those last two clips and basically and yeah that's in the on position so i'm going to pressure test the carb but because it was a little wonky the one time i went up to full idle or wide open throttle you heard it go you know it would just it wanders and that's why i think this carburetor is still suspect even though i can kind of tune around some stuff I, you know that kind of hard to start stuff is for the birds okay so. carbs holding steady i'm not going to waste too much time i could dig a little deeper into this carburetor but we're going to use my donor carb oops that's the chinese M one the donor carb all right if you're still with me i'm just as frustrated wanting to get this video over and done with but that's uh the modification on this and it basically bulletproofs that carb here's a carb that we were running and it did have some corrosion in it and that's why i actually took the um, adjustment screws out of it and made sure that the passages for the idle circuit and the main jet were nice and clear i'm gonna button this back up and uh hopefully hopefully this is done because he's coming to pick it up today i really thought it was going to be good this morning well it was a good day to wear this shirt All right, dry carb, cold start. In a perfect world, it's usually like the fifth pull on, ch on choke. That sounds better already. 
said and done that was four hours when you know you take something to the dealership and they're just like look man you did a new one and a lot of times I, I'm guilty of this I'm like sure man I'll be happy to look at it and let's 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 dig into it but you know with an older saw that's been road hard put up with you know obviously and you're gonna see this series if you like watching somebody on the struggle bus the next couple of videos are gonna be like this as well because I have pushed off you know, the two Husky projects for, you know, a couple of months. This has been here for, you know, a month and a half. Hell, it might have been here two months too. And he finally needs it. And I have been avoiding it like the plague because I know how these go. I've just done this for far too long. You start getting to these old beat up saws that everybody's monkeyed around with. You know, I had a bad connection on the kill switch. I had wrong screws here and there. You know, I just try to get everything back right, and it just takes too long. You know, you can't charge for that. You can't, you know, and now I've burned up half my day. You know, the beginning of this video, there's no sunshine in the backyard, and I'm in full sun now, and you can kind of see the progression <laughs> of how much of this day I've burned up. Um, regardless, though, I feel like this is finally fixed, and he's going to be able to use this for years and not have any issues out of it. He's got fresh bearings and seals. You know, the piston rings look good. We didn't, I didn't go in real tight on them, but uh, all right, that was a little bit longer than I wanted to happen. Uh, again, if you're here at the end, thank you so much. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.